Hey, friends. Wayne over here at Ram Man Inc. Hey, Klein of us sent us his 222-9171 uh, one inch master cylinder uh, used on the uh, 70 E bodies of one year only. This one's in remarkably good shape. I can recognize this one from, I don't know, six, seven, eight years ago or something like that. We got some of these in NOS's and uh, they had these uh, yellow anodized pistons. Now, what that does is that uh, hardens, puts a coating on the aluminum, and makes it last longer. Now visually, I'm looking at this cup right here, and it is a little bit deformed. Uh, looks like it's been sitting for a little while. Sheen on there. So, uh, there's how our two pistons go in, right? This is the front piston, or close whoops that's the front piston closest to the front and then the rear piston uh, is right there which uh, has most of the fluid now y'all talk about proportion valves and all that there ain't no proportion valves or pressure reducers all the proportioning is actually done in the master cylinder size of the pistons and the volume so uh, these are drum disc master cylinders and uh, of course I pulled it apart uh, held in by this retainer screw uh, on this uh, model right here some have a bolt in the bottom and some have a clip uh, if you leave the cap on you can use uh, light air pressure through the ports to help you extricate get the pistons out are you with me unless they're rusted up and then you got to use all kinds of other measures now i need to take out these old brass seats and you know what these little old deck screws they work they work pretty well for getting these uh old brass seats out i'm gonna show y'all folks how to do that i'm gonna thread this down in here a little bit because we're gonna replace this stuff here I threaded my little deck screws down in there, the appropriate size, and now I'm going to use me some electrical side cutters. Get like a little fulcrum. There we go. Then we have one brass seat out. And And here we have the other one out. Now I noticed something that's very strange about this. This is already missing some components. Of course, this is your drum brake circuit on a master cylinder. They're reversed. The front is the rear brakes, and the rear is the front brakes. You with me? Smaller springs won't go into that, not as much tension. You press on this, front spring to uh, depresses first, sends fluid to the back brakes, yada yada along with the valving. Uh, you always want the rear brakes to engage before the front ones. Think about it. Got the front brake engaged, your ass hand swings around, you can go into a corkscrew like a merry-go-round and you can't stop it until the kinetic energy reaches zero. What a shit show you'd be there. So anyway, we've got these two new brass seats right here and on a drum brake circuit, especially in this era up through about 1978, they should have a residual pressure valve in them. Now, this residual, little rubber residual pressure valve, and of course the spring's missing. I gotta get a spring. There's a little spring, and it goes right behind the seat. And what this does is it keeps about three, four, five pounds of, of pressure on the drum brake circuit. And this does a multitude of things. I won't really go into lots of depth, but they noticed years ago when they retract and the pistons on the wheel cylinders would retract really fast every now and then. It would suck air. 
Uh, this prevents that, keeps a little pressure. They also want to keep the wheel cylinders in energized slightly to uh, help them speed out the process. You know, drum brakes have to move thousands of miles of difference compared to disc brakes where the pads are riding right there talking three, four, five thousandths and you start stopping. Whereas drum brakes, right, you get a picture of it. So I'll have to get him a, get him a spring and uh, the way I install these, uh, you, you can, uh, one of the simplest ways is just to drop them off in there and use your little uh, quarter inch drive deep socket and you can just tap it down in there you don't want to mess it up too much but they're just kind of a little slight press fit and they just go right in no problem whatsoever I may actually get an opportunity to show you that or maybe I'll at least show you one because I gotta get a spring for the other one yep we can do that tell you what we'll do we'll go ahead and install this this one right here where the big old main piston where is it at right there yep dropped it right down in there make sure it's straight yep there it is find me a little bitty deep socket ah, there's one right there it'll fit right down in there There you go. It's seated. That's all you have to do. Now, on to our piston. So, what we've got right here, this is our little front piston. And if you look at it real close on this model, it's got uh, two wiper cups on here. One and two. And then it's got a pumping cup. And normally, pumping cups, they've got little divots in them. So that the fluid can come backwards when the pistons start retracting along with the piston ports. And we'll get to wiping cups and wipers are continuous. Now, you can't get no cups anymore. We've got this supply from back in the day and all that, so we just match things up without buying kits. A lot of the kits are obsolete. Ain't out there anymore and all that stuff. So, so here we go. We got our short front piston right here, and uh, we pop off this return spring. Pop off this little cup retainer right there. And then, uh, let's knock this front pumping cup off. There we go. Not much to that, right gang? Now, these right here, these can be a little bit trickier. And I'll tell you what, I've stabbed myself once or twice. We got to get these old cups off this piston. That's why all the people sell rebuild kits because these come all assembled. But this is how we did it over and over back in the day and this way we still get those genuine high quality first class cups not these uh well uh, we're gonna say maybe n not first class can, can we just leave it at that and be be kind right so as you can see I'm getting these bad, these new cups installed on here. There's a little bit of trick to it. Well, we come in. You can come in both ways on this, and it requires it requires a little bit of patience sometimes. Get this going. And some of them are pretty tight. Like this one right here. He wants to be real tight. But 
That's better, right? So, I'm going to show you. Now we got those two wiping cups on there. And then here comes our pumping cup. And remember our cup retainer. And then our rebound spring. So, our piston. You got to make sure that they fit flush and they're just right. Can't have no quick twists in them. No imperfections whatsoever. Yeah. You can see now how it works. All a master cylinder is is a hydraulic cylinder. Any dirt or debris up underneath one of these cups where it's wiping back and forth will have you leak. And that's one of the problems that we run into on some of our rebuilds. No kidding. About five to ten percent of the people that we do now this one's in great shape it doesn't even need a brass sleeve this is the original bore it's in really mint shape but we'll we'll redo their master cylinder and they'll bolt it back on there and they'll uh, a couple days later they'll say well it's weeping out of the back well it's leaking well what's happened is you got you know, you bolt this master cylinder on there, you run some fluid through there, and it mixes up, and you, you got dirt in your system, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you. This was a super, super nice TA. And that right there, that's what come out of the master cylinder. Don't you tell me that you don't have no dirt in there because you replaced everything. Because I'm going to tell you, you're a liar. Nobody replaces the block over the rear axle and you ain't gonna get all the dirt out <laughs> anyway so here we are to our primary piston got this big old stiff spring on here it's a really good idea to mark the length before you take it apart <clears throat> so you can get that rebound just right get that piston to sit just right so you can get it to sit just right on these ports and uh, get us a Phillips head screwdriver, get this apart. Be careful when you're putting this back together. The spring is really, really stiff, really stiff. And strip out that little screw. That's like a hardened screw going into an aluminum piston. And yeah, you do the common sense. Strip that strip that damn piston out strip the threads out of that piston and you really do got you a mess don't you brother I'm gonna go ahead and do this front one for expediency all right so now we're gonna make damn sure we get it started straight And we got her started straight. Praise God, right? Make sure we get it the right length. There we go. That one's replaced. Now we're going to pull this back wiper off. Or the one closest to the end of the master cylinder, the one that you see. There we go. Get this new one on. These things are tight. Sometimes you'll think you're going to rip that bitch in too. 